Serjan Djokovic, Novak's father, is waiting eagerly to hear if he'll be permitted to attend his son's Australian Open final following his incident with pro-Russia supporters. So what really happened? While he waits for a judgment from tournament organizers, Novak Djokovic's father could be barred from attending the Australian Open final due to his heated contact with supporters of Vladimir Putin. On Sunday, Djokovic will face Stefano Tsitsipas in the finals of the Australian Open, and he'll be going for a record-extending 10th title. Now that a video of his father, Serdan Djokovic, at a pro-Russian demonstration on Wednesday has surfaced, Novak Djokovic may have to win at the Rod Laver Arena without his father's support. Pictures of Djokovic's dad have surfaced online, showing him with a man who appears to be clutching a Russian flag and wearing a shirt bearing the letter Z, a mark of support for Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Meanwhile, back at home, he saw his son win the semifinal match against American Tommy Paul. Sparking outrage after footage of the match appeared on a pro-Russian YouTube channel, tennis star Novak Djokovic has spoken out in defense of his father. He is claiming that he was misused in the recent controversy over the video footage. He stated that he had gotten caught up in the demonstrations by accident and hadn't set out to make any sort of political statement at all. Novak Djokovic with a moment of absolute brilliance. No way. Djokovic in particular. Had absolutely no business winning that point. His statement stated, I am here only to support my son. I never intended for this to become public knowledge or for my life to be disrupted in any way. And I certainly didn't set out to be involved in it. All my relatives and I have seen the horror of war. And now all we want is peace. And Djokovic, who's going for his 22nd Grand Slam, said it was unfortunate that his dad had been misrepresented. The 35-year-old said his father was misused by Russian fans as he made his way through a crowd following his quarterfinal triumph over Andrei Rublev. Djokovic noted that numerous Serbian flags could be seen. He actually believed that. He also believed he was taking a photo with a Serbian. While this is the first time Djokovic's parents have visited Australia since he won the tournament in 2008, Serdian's presence has surrounded the trip with controversy. However, Tennis Australia CEO and event director Craig Tiley indicated that a last-minute decision will be made about whether or not he will be allowed courtside for Sunday's final. He said, I'm sorry, I can't offer you a firm answer right now. We're in a different circumstance, and on Sunday night, whether or not that has any bearing on it or not, the level of intensity around the events on Friday night likely played a role in the decision to skip it, Tylee elaborated. He made it obvious that he never intended for this to occur. In addition, there was no strategic place to execute it. The whole family was crushed by the way it sounded, but Novak in particular, who is so dedicated to winning, was particularly hurt. Quickly anticipating a suspension, Novak Djokovic's father cancelled his plans to watch his son play in the Australian Open quarterfinals. As a matter of fact, it is most likely that he won't even attend the final, regardless of the authorities' decision. Vasil Miroshenchenko, Ukraine's ambassador to Australia, responded by demanding his exclusion from the year's first Grand Slam tournament. In a series of tweets, former world number 13 Alex Dolgopolov expressed his outrage and accused Djokovic of publicly endorsing a genocidal regime. Brilliant combination of shots. Uh, is outrageous. Dolgopolov advanced to the quarterfinals of the 2011 Australian Open in Melbourne. Djokovic Sr. said in a statement distributed by his publicists. Oh, I don't believe it. And everyone here on Centrale absolutely loving what they're watching. Djokovic. What a reaction from Djokovic at the start of the second set. I think we can say it's game over.
I am here to support my son only. I certainly didn't set out to make headlines or otherwise cause trouble. As I have done after every one of my son's matches, I was outside with Novak's fans, celebrating and taking pictures with them. In all honesty, I didn't mean to get involved. All my relatives and I have seen the horrors of war, and now all we want is peace. But he also said he wouldn't be attending his son's semifinal match on Friday, so there's no disruption to tonight's semifinal for my son or for the other player. I have chosen to watch from home. Nadal is the youngest player to win 21 Grand Slam titles. He said, I hope the match goes well, and as always, I'll be cheering for my son. Sir Dan Djokovic has remained silent regarding the claim that he stated long live Russia, but Serbian journalists have interpreted his comments as a straightforward farewell. Following their son's expulsion from Serbia last year, Djokovic's parents have made the long journey to Australia to be with him for the first time since his maiden title in 2008. After Djokovic beat Andrei Rublev of Russia in the quarterfinals, a sizable group of Russia fans gathered on the steps of Rod Laver Arena to celebrate. The Tennis Australia organization also made an official statement. After the events of Wednesday night, we worked quickly with authorities and our security teams to have the protest instigators removed from the arena. We've been stressing to the teams and players all day that they can't do anything that may upset or disturb the event. Mr. Serjan Djokovic has made a statement saying that he will not be present at tonight's semifinal match. To that end, we're reiterating our call for a ban on Belarusian and Russian flags at the event and promising to keep working to ensure the safety of the attendees. Australia's tennis community has also voiced its support for a ceasefire in the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. Meanwhile, Novak Djokovic was having a heated discussion with the chair umpire in the first set of his semifinal match at the Australian Open, as he was on his way to breaking the record for consecutive wins in a Grand Slam tournament. With a 5-1 lead in the opening set on Rod Laver Arena, the Serbian was about to retrieve his towel when he was caught breaking the serve clock. After the conclusion of a point, the serve clock allows players a maximum of 25 seconds to hit a serve. The 35-year-old complained that the chair official failed to begin the shot clock after he had returned with his towel. He asked the umpire, The ball kids are not permitted to give me the towel, so tell me how it works. I had to tell him, No, that's not how it works, and then explain the regulations to him. For his part, Djokovic stated, It's the first time I've been to the towel this game, and you start the clock before I touch the towel. Well done. The 21-time Grand Slam champion was booed by the audience for his complaining, and it may have distracted him as he threw away a 5-1 lead. Working as a Eurosport commentator, Tim Henman acknowledged the incident diverted his attention. I'm surprised he had that type of in-depth discussion, and for me, it did distract him. The former British number one remarked on the in-depth conversation between the two. Despite the booing from the crowd, Djokovic displayed his champion mentality by winning the following two games and the set. Djokovic, now in villain mode, stuck his finger in his ear and smirked at the Rod Laver Arena crowd. In the end, Djokovic won 7 of 11 breakpoints to get within one victory of Rafael Nadal's record of 22 major titles. After 2 hours and 20 minutes, the 7-5, 6-1, 6-2 victory set up a final match showdown with Stefano Tsitsipas, who had previously upset Karen Kachanov 7-6, 2-6-4, 6-7, 6-6, and 6-3. Let's see how Djokovic fares in the final without the support of his father at the arena.